Shalom to all of Yisrael and those fearing Elohim, and more importantly, Shabbat Shalom. Peace to you and to your family. Um, it's a blessed day. So we're going to get right into it. So uh, our last episode, because uh, you're back with Till When, O Yisrael. And in the last episode, we did, um, we spoke about the new covenant or the renewed covenant. Um, we spoke about, uh, we were reading Yeshaya. And then we went into um, your, your Mayahu 3131 very briefly. So today, I wanted to show you a little study that Elohim was doing with me uh, in the prophet Yermiyahu. So here we go. I'm going to be looking at the screen. You can see me on the screen uh, as well as looking at the scripture. So, um, okay. We're going to read it in uh, multiple versions here. Let me, uh, let me switch over. So I do a bunch of them. You can see like I do the Brenton, which is like a, a Septuagint, the Good News, which kind of goes off the Septuagint, JPS Tanakh, Jewish Publication, uh, King James with Concordance, and pretty much the one I've loved the most is uh, TS 2009, which everyone has mistakes, but again, we're all doing the best we can. So uh, praise be to the Elohim of Yisrael on this blessed day. Shabbat Shalom. Let's get into it. Okay, so um, I think for this version, I took notes to because I don't always like the way that this version reflects uh, a particular word because each word has reflection. So uh, the translators do the best they can, but not every one of them was, was filled with uh, the Ruach HaKodesh, or as we say in English, the Holy Spirit. Okay? Okay, so let's start from the beginning. I need to scroll up. Um and the Lord says, and Yahweh says, the time is coming when I will be the Elohim of all tribes of Israel, and they will be my people. So I make a little note here in Esau. Uh, this states that the Elohim of Israel will be the Elohim of all the clans, the true reunion of Israel and Yehuda. Okay. In the desert, I showed mercy to those people who had escaped, who had escaped death when the people of Israel longed for rest. So, the, the way this struck me, and, I, and you'll see it in my note, is um, after redeeming his children from and out of Mitzrayim, the children of Israel escaped death and were provided for in the wilderness by the mercies and goodness of the Most High. Which is true, because after the uh, the death of the death of the firstborn in Mitzrayim, Moshe takes the children out of Mitzrayim into the wilderness, where Elohim provides for them. But also a little note that it took me was to the Hiskalus uh, revelation of Moshiach, uh, where it says those with the testimony of Yahushua HaMashiach and guarding the covenant, the commandments. Elohim will give rest to her, Yisrael, upon bringing the Olam Haba, only to those walking in righteousness and enduring till the end. These will enter into the rest. Amen. So we see here that Elohim covers the sins initially of his people, but after the saving grace, he does give us the Torah and he expects us to walk in it, and those that, the, those that were unbelief in the wilderness did not survive. Those that made the golden calf, they died for that sin. Okay? So verse 3, I appeared to them from far away. People of Yisrael, I have always loved you, so I continue to show you my constant love. Once again, I will rebuild you. Once again, you will take up your tambourines and dance joyfully. And I made a note for that one. Let's see. Referring to Yisrael as a maiden is her spiritual condition being renewed. No longer being widowed, but now a maiden ready and prepared to receive of the goodness of her husband. Enter into the wedding feast prepared for you. We will again dance with our Elohim in the fullness of his glory, our glory. Okay, so this is a beautiful thing because Elohim is calling Ephraim home. 
He's saying that I have renewed you, my son. Come on home. Okay, let's move to verse 5. I'm going to move the screen down a little bit. So verse 5, right at the top. Uh, Once again, you will plant vineyards on the hills of Samaria, and those who plant them will eat with the vineyards they produce. Yes, the time is coming when sentries will call out, or watchmen will call out on the hills of Ephraim, saying, let's go up to Zion, to Yahweh our Elohim. So, yes, the time is coming when watchmen, because let's, let, let's, uh, let's see what it says here. So, I, I like in the, the 2009 says, the TS 2009, there shall be a day when the watchmen cry on Mount Ephraim, arise and let us go up to Zion, to Yahweh our Elohim. So, uh, going back to the note here that I wrote, uh, stay with me because I know I move a little quick, but... When you come into the land once again, it will be said, Arise and let us go up to Zion, to Yah our Elohim. Once again, all your males will will appear before Yah three times a year to the one place where he causes his name and presence to dwell. There you shall bring all that I command you. No more high places around the world which should not be so. May he come. So just elaborating on this note a little bit, we were only allowed to bring the gifts and have our festivals at the one place of worship. Nowhere else within the promised land were you allowed to give up uh, the firstborn of your flock, uh, the tithe of your offering, the, the gift of your hand, was only in the one place of worship within the Ba'is HaMikdash at Yerushalayim, uh, Zion. Nowadays, we have a bunch of people that, you know, Pharisees that do it worldwide. It should not be so. Okay, verse 7. And Yahweh says, Sing with joy for Yisrael, the greatest of the nations. Sing your song of praise. Yahweh has saved his people. He has, he has rescued all who are left. I will bring them from the north and gather them from the ends of the earth. The blind and the lame will come with them, pregnant women and those about to give birth. They will come back a great nation. Hallelujah. Let's look at the note for that. So verse 8 here. Let's look at the note. This is the Basuras Hagula, the good news of redemption to the house of Ephraim, which is first given to the Yahudim. Elohim sends Yahudim into the Goyim to redeem a people for himself and to restore the tent of Dawid Hamalek. Amen. Two sticks in the hand of the master. Amen. So this is truly beautiful. This is Yehuda being reunited with his brothers. My people will return weeping, praying as I lead them back. I will guide them to streams of water on a smooth road where they will not stumble. I am like a father to Yisrael, and Ephraim is my firstborn son. So when you click on this verse and we compare it, we can see, uh, let's see what it says in in, uh, the TS and in the King James here. With weeping they shall come, and with prayers I bring them. I shall make them walk by rivers of water in a straight way in which they do not stumble. For I shall be a father to Yisrael and Ephraim. He is my firstborn. And for firstborn here, we see that that's the Bechor, the Bechor, the firstborn, the chief, the eldest son. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of secret language, spiritual language being portrayed in this one little verse. And so when we go back here and we click on it, um, so this is my note that I took. Verse 9, spiritual words concerning righteousness, thus it has been said, he who comes to me, I shall give him living waters to drink and he shall thirst no more. This water is the sustenance of the Almighty, which is more specifically the righteousness of his instructions to him who believes. 
In the latter part of this, we see Elohim calling Ephraim, the house of Yisrael, his firstborn, which is what Moshe said to Pharaoh. And that's um, Shemot, Exodus 4, verse 22. Again, as I say, you must know the past in order to know the future. There is no new thing under the sun. Elohim will cleanse us of our sin and cover us under his wings if we repent of our sins and believe in the prophet that Moshe told us was coming and indeed has come. The spirit of the prophets is completely in Moshiach. In these last days, Elohim has spoken to us through the Son, the right hand slash right arm of Elohim. We must heed these words spoken by Moshiach or else it shall be required of the one denying the sacrifice that sets him apart. Debarim. You must believe in these words that Elohim is renewing covenant with the children of Yehuda and the children of Yisrael, that we walk in the covenant in righteousness. This is the good news. Verse 10. Yahweh says, Nations, listen to me and proclaim my words on the far off shores. I scattered my people, but I will gather them and guard them as a shepherd guards his flock. I have set Israel's people free and have saved them from a mighty nation. What does that resemble? Again, the firstborn of Mitzrayim and Ashur in the place of the firstborn of Yisrael. Behold the mercies of your Elohim, O Yisrael. So Yahweh is going to set the children free at whose expense? The Goyim. Just like he killed oh, oh, uh, Cush and put in your place, O children of Yehuda, O children of Yisrael. So the redemption is an unrighteous one dying in the place of a righteous one, a forgiven one, a repenting one. This is acceptable before the Almighty, the Mighty One of Yisrael, the one that has repentance for his sins, cleanses his way, and turns from the wicked. Verse 12. Let me, let me put it to the top. Okay. They will come and sing for joy on Mount Zion and be delighted with my gifts, gifts of grain and wine and of olive oil, gifts of sheep and cattle. They will be like a well-watered garden. They will have everything they need. Then the young women will dance and be happy and men, young and old, will rejoice I will comfort them and turn their mourning into joy, their sorrow into gladness. Hallelujah. I will fill the priest with the richest food and satisfy all the needs of my people. I, Yahweh, have spoken. So when we come down to 14, uh, I will satiate the soul of the priest, but th this is an interesting word for priest. Obviously it is Kohen. Goin, uh, active particle, literally one officiating a priest, also an acting priest or a chief ruler. So there are different reflections of that because it says that we shall reign as priests. So it means like, you know, we will be mighty. We will be Elohim with Elohim. Uh, so there's different reflections of that one right there. But it says, I will fill the priest with the richest of food and satisfy all the needs of my people. I, Yahweh, have spoken. And the Lord says, A sound is heard from on high, the sound of bitter weeping. Rachel is crying for her children. They are gone, and she refuses to be comforted. Spiritual alert. Spiritual alert. So we click on the note that I took for this, and here it is. Spiritual words of the voice of Rachel a voice from on high, Ramah. The mother of Yausuf, the father of Ephraim, crying for her children because they are no more. And so there's other, uh, you can read in Hosea, um, chapters 1 and 2, and Yirmiyahu, all of chapter 3, where verse 18 shows Ephraim lamenting. It, it, later in this chapter, uh, Ephraim will be lamenting. 
So we'll see that. For he desperately wants to return to the Elohim of Yisrael. Yisrael's first and one true love. Amen. So right now, Ephraim has been given up in this verse. Elohim divorced the northern tribes of Yisrael, the ten tribes. So she's weeping because her children are no more. Elohim said, they are not my people. Uh, uh, lo ami, you are not my people and I am not for you. But where it was said to them that you are not my people, it shall be said to them that you are my people and I am your Elohim. This is the regathering of the flocks of Yisrael, Yehuda and Yisrael, where we will be one in the hand of the master. Okay, let's move on to uh, uh, verse 16. Stop your crying and wipe away your tears. All that you have done for your children will not go unrewarded. They will return from the enemy's land. So he said, this is Elohim saying, I, I will do what, what I am and who I say I am. I will gather them. Don't cry anymore. Believe. There is hope for your future. Your children will come back home. I, Yahweh, have spoken. So when he, said, when he says he's spoken, this is a done deal. The children of Israel, Ephraim, will come home. Okay, let's move it to the top. We're going to move on to verse 18. Okay, let me highlight it for you. So, verse 18. I hear the people of Israel say in grief, Yahweh, we are like an untamed animal, but you taught us to obey. So this is saying, Ephraim, you, you've been far from the Torah. Father, we have been far from your instructions, but you taught us to obey. Bring us back. We are ready to return to you, O Yahweh, our Elohim. And so I made a note for this one. This is Ephraim lamenting like an untrained calf. Right? So uh, let, let's look at the verse after I'm done reading. So I'll, I'll read the note afterwards. Let's compare it. So when you come down, here, here it is in both of them. So uh, in the King James, it says, as a bullock, unaccustomed okay but in the ts 2009 it says i have clearly heard ephraim lamenting you have chastised you have chastised me and i was chastised like an untrained calf turn me back and i shall turn back for you are yahweh my elohim okay so when we go to that and now we click on the note with the untrained calf in our minds it says ephraim lamenting Lamented like an untrained calf, thus he made for himself the molten calves. Poor Elohim, return my son and I will love you. So this is him being remorseful over his sin. That he worshipped in Shamaron with the golden calves and it said kiss the calves and give your offering. So he's lamenting now for, he's, he's knowing that he's greatly sinned. Now, Yehuda is doing the same thing that Yisrael did. Uh, he's making his own high places and he, you know, he's celebrating his festivals on his own calendar under his own prerogative. And not to mention, he's making an arm and a grip doing so. Uh, these people are charging big money to do these festivals all over the earth. Excuse me. Yahweh's not pleased with you. Uh, stop that. Wait for Moshiach to bring us home. Wait for Moshiach to expand the borders. Um, wait on Elohim. Again, I say wait on Elohim. If you're staying with me, you're, 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 you're not getting the best part yet. You're going to get the best part at the end. You have to stay. I'm going to go a little further. Okay? You're Miyahu 3119. We turned away from you, but soon we wanted to return. After you had punished us, we hung our heads in grief. We were ashamed and disgraced because we sinned when we were young, meaning that when we were with you in the land. And it says, the next one, Yisrael, you are my dearest child, the one I love best. Whenever I mention your name, I think of you with love. My heart goes out to you. I will be merciful, says Elohim. Set up your signs and mark the road. Find again the way by which you left. Come back, people of Yisrael. 
Come home to the towns you left. How long will you hesitate, faithless people? Have I created something new and different? As different as a woman protecting a man? Let's click on that and, re and compare that. So we'll come here, uh, down at the bottom here. Till when would you turn here and there, O backsliding daughter? For Yahweh has created what is new on earth. A woman encompasses a man. Okay, we are going to turn back to our Elohim, our first love, uh, as, as, a, as an unclean uh, woman being washed of her sin. Okay, because you're, you're not allowed to, to return to the first husband if the husband divorces you. But Elohim in his mercy is going to make an exception for his people, just like he did in Mitzrayim. Okay, verse 23. Yahweh the Almighty, the El of Yisrael says, When I restore the people to their land, they will once again say in the land of Yehuda and in its towns, May Yahweh bless the sacred hill of Yerushalayim, the holy place where he lives. So this is Ephraim also acknowledging that it's not Shamaron. It's Yerushalayim, the, the blessed city of the feet of the king. The, 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 the city of Dawid Hamalek, Zion, the fullness and the glory of Elohim. It's coming soon. Okay, verse 24. The people will live in Yehuda and all its towns, and there will be farmers and shepherds with their flocks. I will refresh those who are weary and will satisfy with food everyone who is weak from hunger. So then, people will say, I went to sleep and woke up refreshed. This is going to be a dream come true. In the snap, in the blink of an eye. Okay, we're going to go a couple more verses down to here. And then we're going to continue uh, a little bit more of this, uh, the renewing of covenant. And here it says, I, Yahweh, say that the time is coming when I will fill the land of Israel and Yehuda with people and animals. And just as I took care to uproot and to pull down and to overthrow, to destroy and to demolish them, so I will take care to plant them and to build them up. Amen. When that time comes, people will no longer say, the parents ate the sour grapes, but the children got the sour taste. Oh no. No, instead, those who eat sour grapes will have their own teeth set on edge. And everyone will die because of their own sin. So many generations have suffered now. For the sins of the peep, the forefathers of Yehuda and Yisrael. Elohim is saying, no longer return to the waters that flow softly in, Sh in Shiloh. Drink and be satisfied and filled. For I'm coming and I give you righteousness and I clothe you in my righteousness and protect you under my wings. Thus I have loved you with an everlasting love. So each man will die for his own sin. And remember that before you go around judging another. Have love and fellowship. May the body of Moshiach come together. Truly Yehuda and Yisrael coming together with one mind and one spirit. Okay? Amen. Here we go now. The best for last. May Yahweh bless it. I'm unworthy for the work that he has called me to do. But may he do it. May he do it for his name's sake. I'm going to stand here. Okay. This is my Shabbat prayer for you. What other day is for such a time for blessings, healings, and understandings to be given to the children. Food on the table, flowing water in your cup. The righteous one who laid down his life to restore the covenant and to bring back those straying from the path. 
Let us walk in the way he has cleared for us. Let all the haughty ones be made low. Let all the crooked paths be made straight. Let all the poor ones share in the esteem. On this day, we pray for whoever participates in this prayer, for our voice to be heard, and for signs and wonders to be given in the authority of his name, so that the Father be glorified. So we pray in the Rebbe Melech HaMoshiach Yahushua, the Blessed One that Moshe told us was coming, has come and shall come again. Hallelujah. May you receive of your sign that Elohim is prepared just for you on this glorious day. So let, let's take it out. Shabbat Shalom to you from my family, from my heart, and from my house. And blessings to you on this day. And the Rebbe Melech, Yahushua HaMashiach. Amen.